In the last video I went over how to download and install Sigwin and the G++ compiler. So let's say that I have a little program here, a C++ program on my desktop, uh, hello world.cpp. And I'm assuming that you know hello world and went through that video on uh, the step-by-step -step analysis of that program. In any case, let's say I want to compile that program now using this cool software that we downloaded and installed. So how do I do that? Well you've been told to type in G++ and then the name of the file so hello world dot cpp and you hit enter and the problem is you get this message saying that there's no such file or directory and there's no input files now many students freak out at this point however the key thing to understand here is that Sigwin doesn't know where the file is Sigwin starts up and it looks at a particular folder on your hard drive and so you need to well solve this problem in one of two ways one way is to use some unix based commands through the sigwin bash shell here and navigate to where that file is so what that means is that you'd have to use some commands to navigate to the desktop now let me be honest that's probably the more difficult solution although the commands are cd to change directories and ls to list what is in the current directory so it's not very difficult but it's a bit more cumbersome than we'd like so the solution the easy solution is to understand where that folder is that Sigwin looks to. So let's go to that folder. You can open up my computer and go to the hard drive and then look for the Sigwin folder and you'll see all of these little folders here. What we care about is the home folder and you'll see uh, an, an additional folder inside of the home folder. It will not be called Joel but you double click on that and you see these files here. Now ignore these files, that's just kind of stock, it's not for our eyes. However, this is the folder that Sigwin looks to when it is installed, okay? So what this means is that your C++ files have to be in this directory and then you will have no problem compiling them using the command that we put into Sigwin previously. So, what do I recommend? Well, you could take that file from your desktop and just drag it into this folder. But please remember that you have to get to this folder every single time um, you want to, let's say, add and compile new C++ programs. So just be very, very careful about this. What I tend to do is uh, use like a little favorite thing here in Windows 7, but that's a little, that's just kind of trick, that's just extra jazz. In any case, I highly recommend working out of this directory here. So what do I mean? Copy your C++ files into this directory, and when you need to edit your program, which you will need to do if you would like to add more lines to it or fix bugs or something like that, then you just double-click it, which will open up your text editor associated with .cpp extensions, and you can edit the file appropriately, save it, and you will have no trouble compiling that using Sigwin. So let's compile the hello world.cpp program. And to verify that hello world is now in our directory, in the directory that Sigwin looks to, we can use that ls command just to kind of see what's going on, see what's available to us. And so you type in ls and hit enter, and it says hello world.cpp. It doesn't tell you about the all of that stuff that I told you wasn't for our eyes, the .bash profile, the .rc. It doesn't tell you about all of that, but it does tell you about the hello world.cpp file that's in that directory. Awesome. So it's there. Now let's compile it. So g++ hello world.cpp. It's very important that you remember to include that file extension. If you leave that off, then Sigwin will complain because ultimately Sigwin understands that if you don't put a file extension, that means that there is... It actually refers to a particular extension in Unix. So, those details aside, be sure to include the .cpp extension. Hit enter. It's thinking. It's compiling. Just give it two seconds. and then it's done. So that took a little bit longer, maybe it's just the first time around, and it has compiled our C++ program and created an executable file for us to execute. And 
just to do ls again, let's see what was created for us. What we should see is indeed what we do see, the a.exe. That's the executable with the default name of a, right? And you can change that using another G++ option, but we're not going to get into those details. a.exe is the compiled version of our little hello world program. So to run that, you'll do dot forward slash a.exe. And there is the well, the run of our program, the execution of our program, and our program simply said hello world, and it asked for that literal string to be sent to the console, to be printed to the console. And that is what we get. So again, in summary, just be very, very careful about where you work from and, and understand that Sigwin looks to that home slash whatever that name is folder that we navigated to. So that should alleviate some of the problems. Don't panic. I'll see you guys in the next video.